Mumon Khan, case 20, a man of great strength. Master Shogun said, why is it that a man of great strength cannot lift his leg? Again he said, if it is, it, again he said, it is not with his tongue that he speaks. Mumon's commentary of Shogun, it must be said that he emptied his intestines and turned his belly out. Yet no one understands it. Even though there is a man who immediately understands it, I will give him severe blows with my stick if he comes to me. Why? Nee, if you want to know pure gold, see it in the midst of fire. Mumon's poem. Lifting his leg, he kicks up the scented ocean. Lowering his head, he looks down on the four Diana heavens. There is no place to put this gigantic body. You, please add another line. The 20th case of the Mumon Khan, Shogun Sugaku Zenji, in the collection of the Mumon Khan koans, this is the most recent case. Mumon Khan was transmitted to Hoto Kokushi, who then actually brought it to Japan, to the Wakayama area of Uara, to Ko Kokuji, when Mumon Ekai was 20 years old, Shogun Zenji, Shogun Sugaku Zenji died. But there is no doubt that Mumon Ekai, who respected, was so respect, was respected him so much, was able to meet him and recognize him and experience him as a very advanced person with training. Shogun Sugaku Zenji lived in the world, and at that time he did Sanzen with Oan Donge Zenji. But at 35 years of old, of age, Shogun Sugaku Zenji decided that no matter what, he wanted to become ordained. And so, at Gakuren Shoja, the Zen Mecca of that era, in Seiko, that was where he was ordained. And since he had lived for until 35 years of age, in a context of being in society, he knew well the way of life in the world and was because of, and while doing that, had also been very educated, especially in Buddhism, in the academic way. This life in the world was thorough. And after Do Oan Donge Zenji, he continued his practice with the disciple of Oan Donge Zenji, Mitan Kanketsu Zenji, with whom he became a teacher in this line, having received his transmitted dharma. In his earlier life, as a Zen teacher, he left an important teaching, true for today as well. Even if one is <coughs> deeply awakened, there is a continuation which we must keep up. This is what he is cautioning us. We see it clearly in the teaching when, which was exemplified by Obaku Zenji, who was constantly prostrating and reading the writings of the ancients. He even had a forehead that was marked by his prostrations. He was prostrating so often. His disciple, Obako Zenji's disciple, Rinzai Zenji, returned to see his teacher. And at Obaku's place, when he went in, Obaku was prostrating as usual. <coughs> Rinzai made a careless offhand comment saying that well, when Obaku Zenji was so obviously a superior great master, then what is this? Why is he still always prostrating and reading sutras in the ancient writings? Where is there a need for these words for a deeply awakened person? Even the sixth patriarch had said that it was not necessary for him to be able to read and write since the written words were not the point in the Dharma, so that even if he could not read and write, he could realize it. But, in fact, <coughs> Rinzai Zenji was not criticizing his teacher, Obaku Zenji. He deeply, deeply respected him for this and also in the context of this for ongoingly continuing his diligent studies and training even into his later life. These things must be done until they all become our bones and flesh. And this is not just so that we can understand something. It is because, this is the context, 
in which we can realize it and pass it along to all ages. It has to be kept going ongoingly, not just from a lip service practice, but to be able to do it in such a way that we become lived through by these practices. Shogun Suwakuzenji came and from that time on went all the way down in the lines from Kido Zenji, Daio Kokushi, Nampo Jomyo Zenji, to Daito Kokushi, Muso Daishi, Kansan Egen Zenji. These were people who all brought the clear Dharma to Japan and these are all together called the main flow of Shogun Sugaku Zenji who read and taught from all of this to their efforts and kept this alive, deep continuation of practice going. This is the way of not giving transmission unless there is true wisdom manifesting. All of their functioning was superior. Each and every one of these great masters just mentioned had superior functioning. And without that superior functioning, there is no way to liberate people. Even one more person awakening in the world. This is the goal, to live, keep this alive in the world, not just among teachers, but even that one more person can be in the world in an awakened way, and even living in that way, be teaching others. We have to study from the ancients' teachings ongoingly, or we cannot truly realize this. Even if many people are not awakened, the efforts to be able to realize this are very important. Even if that, at that time there are efforts made to keep that teaching alive eventually, even if at that very time it is not something which is catching on, we have, because they kept going, we still have today the Zen of Master Hakuin. Today also we have to make these great efforts to realize the very meat of the lineage. If this very meat of the lineage is not directly realized, and for doing this we have to deeply study and continue that studying, and this is a matter of great importance. But <coughs> even this being done, it must be coupled with true deep experiencing. It cannot be simply knowledge about these things. We have to drink down these words, but also understand them from our own personal experience of them. And if not that, how will the true line continue? Continuing is based on this. And this is what is being said here. This man of great strength mentioned in the koan. It's not about a person of great physical strength. It is about one who has fulfilled their training, but is still needing to polish, because we can't end it with just that. We have to make it our whole life's commitment. Our state of mind has to be worked on. No matter what, we have to continue that. So why can't the man of great strength lift up his leg, and can he not speak with his tongue? We have to open our mouth to liberate others. And it has to be in such a way that we speak from experience, but also from education. That there is a third line in another place where this koan is taken from about the red line. And this is the way, what, how does a person of true strength realize this continuous red line? And this is the way where it is being referred to as that practice of ongoing, clear mind moments in every single moment, seeing and hearing with the same eyes and ears as the Buddha. But it is not only about perceiving with eyes and ears the phenomena of the world, but the deeper wisdom of the Buddha, the four great wisdoms of the fourfold moonlight, the wisdom of the great perfect mirror wisdom, of the universal nature wisdom, of the marvelous observing wisdom, <coughs> of the perfection of in action wisdom. 
here we have all the experiences <coughs> and the wisdoms which the Buddha taught and which he lived here in this fourfold moonlight. This and the wisdom, our lives have to not just think about and mentally perceive this wisdom, it has to become our second nature. For this, from morning until night and night until morning, we have to continue and keep our practice alive. This is why the daily behavior of the lives of the ancients and all the stories of the koans are so important to learn from, <coughs> or else we do not know how they lived. But it has to be <coughs> included with the direct experience of their state of mind. And reading these stories brings us that truth, or else these would not have lasted. This deepest truth neither would have lasted for 2,550 years. This case is about just this. When we learn that we must continue this polishing of the state of mind through today, and this is what this is teaching us. ここに小学通学第一区において大陸寮の人何としてか足を持たれ立たざると一応このような言い方をしておられますけれども本当に死にきってきたのかな本当に自ら我もない天地もない近代に散り注んないという境地を本当の意味で踏み抜いておるのかなこの境外を踏み抜いておらないとお互いはその子を読んでも頭の中の知識の解釈に走るしかないのであります。白煙禅寺も四十二歳以下において初めて監禁の眼を開けると十回しておられます。自らの教内容を。Sandy just this with his words. But first, have you really broken through completely? Have you really died completely to the ego? Do you really know that special mind, that state of mind where there is no speck left whatsoever anywhere throughout heavens and earth? Or, if not, then we cannot say that we truly know the meaning of the ancient's wisdom. At the age of 42, Master Hakuin said that he Finally, for the first time, age 42, opened his sutra reading, sutra understanding, I, uh, Iwa, I. Finally, truly that opened. But without a deep experience and dying completely to that egoistic view, this is not possible. As Master Rinzai has said, on top of the mountain, there is one with no path down. Standing in the crossroads, there is one with a path, with no path going back and forth, like Vimalakirti in the marketplace, like one on top of the mountain, and there is no path down. This is a person in deep samadhi, acknowledging nothing, with no awareness of any others that need awakening. But these are not two separate people, the one in the marketplace, the one on top of the mountain, uninterrupted in their samadhi, we have to know this place deeply, this place where we directly experience no self, no other, and no heavens and earth. Or we are caught on altruistically self-aggrandizing people helping. And this is done for getting approval in the world. This is not coming forth from our truest wisdom. The Buddha said it clearly. I have the true Dharma I, the marvelous mind of Nirvana, the true form of the formless and the subtle dharma gate, independent of words, transmitted beyond doctrine. This is the state of mind of no small self. And for this, Mumun Ekai teaches us 
precisely, gives us exactly how to go about it in the first koan of the Mumon Khan, where he teaches us that we must use our entire body and being for doing this. Every single one of our 360 smallest bones, 84,000 of our hair pores, with all of this diving into it, throwing ourselves into it with ultimate passion, we have to continue 24 hours of the day, not getting caught on some idea of is it something to have, is it something to not have, is it nihilistic, does it exist? <coughs> when we get caught on those ideas, that's not the point. We have to hold it as if we have a hot iron ball in our mouth, which we cannot swallow down and cannot spit out. 24 hours of the day, we continue without pause, letting go of all of our previous conditioning, of our attachments, of our external ideas and opinions, of our unnecessary thinking. We drop it all and drop it all again and again. We continue letting go of all of it, doing it so totally that we don't even know where is there an inside and where is there an outside anymore. We have given everything so deeply to letting go of all of this, but we cannot even explain it. We are like a person who is a person who cannot speak, trying to tell their dream. We can only know it for ourselves. Mumon Ekai says this because he knows that this is the only way of going against being self-satisfied by personally gathered information about these things. This is not the Buddhist wisdom and experience, which is all something which has to be directly experienced. And for realizing this, we continue with that move until that move is all that could possibly come out from us. But for doing this, this completely, we have to ripen it and ripen it and ripen it and ripen it. And eventually, in that ripening process, that small self is gone. And when we are becoming that move completely, there is no place for an ego to even enter. But we have to ripen to that point. When we have gotten rid of everything, cleared out all of it, that we ever gathered and stuck on ourselves, down to where there is only left that one point of that move, and we continue with that until there is no more move. And then we will know that place which can answer any of the 60 supplementary koans of Mu, starting out with something perhaps like divide the Mu into two. What is the actualization of this newly born world after we have died completely? Divide the world into many. And with this, it can be even seen if our small-minded ideas and extraneous ideas have been let go of. If, we, if they have, there will be only the deeply true wisdom remaining. But this cannot be known by explaining. It has to be done by experiencing. And that experiencing has to be done to this point. Shogun Tsubaku Zenji, referring to that person of great strength, asks us this question. It has to be that person where there is no me left. So how does that happen? It happens because it happens through the Buddha and the ancients opening it. Just as Rinzai has said, the person on top of the mountaintop with no path down, the person who is in the marketplace and the crossroads with no front and back, this is not about two separate people, but about the Buddha nature with which we are all endowed without exception. But we have to do this great cleaning and see how all existence is one from our own experiencing of it. This is a very high level teaching which is being given by Shogun Sugaku. So first of everything, we have to do this great cleaning of ego. We have to do this, get rid of all of our dualistic thinking. And from there comes, naturally, this wisdom of the Buddha and the ancients. Spontaneously it arises because we directly perceive things. The ancients are not giving us this precious wisdom. They are teaching us how to realize it ourselves to see this closely, and it is not about our overheard ideas of what is not really our own experience, 
these overheard and overread ideas are not of any use. First, we have to do this great cleaning, and then, when that great cleaning is done, our, we're able to perceive directly what the ancients were teaching. And this is what we can do after we have let go of everything. This is all the world of experiencing. And if we don't realize this experience, then we stay caught and caged. And we are not able to realize this place that is being talked about here as the person of great strength. <laughs> direct, simple, and clear. Purify your deeply seeing. Purify your deeply sensing. Then you can see everything simply and smoothly. And it is for this that we have to do zazen and let go of all of our confusing past experiences that we have just gathered and stuck on. If to return to our original clear mind, the ancients and Buddha's wisdom pierces through that and comes forth spontaneously out of that clarified state of mind. And without all of that complicatedness, this is what is the deep kindness of Shogun Sugaku. He is teaching us how to do this. And if we don't realize it, it just becomes an injury. We have not at all been able to come to grips with the most important things from that which we have learned and gathered. Was that all this gathered and stuck on, and we have lived from that, thinking that was who we are. But this is not the actuality. And for letting go of all of that, we have Zazen. In this one week of session, to let go of it as much as possible, to do that great cleaning and realize human's truest source. But we hear that and we add more ideas about, oh, this is so difficult, I can't do that. But it is exactly those thoughts. We ourselves, by thinking like that and holding on to those thoughts, are what makes this confusing and difficult. It is not about time. If we sit deeply and realize a deep wisdom and clarity, then we will be like a mirror, reflecting the wisdom of the ancients. And then we are, when we are able to truly realize this wisdom, we want nothing more than to share it with everyone. And here we have the point of it is not with his tongue that he speaks. It is this truth which comes forth from deeply within when we realize this, which Shogun Sukaku is teaching here. Thank you. Oh. Oh.